I'm going to show you how I make my salsa. Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs farm and welcome to the Daddy Curbs garden. I'm here today with my beautiful assistant, my daughter, Adeline, as she's going to help me prepare garden salsa for you. I've had a lot of people ask for how do you make your salsa because I show pictures on Instagram and Facebook and different places about making garden salsa. Pictures of some of these things here. And now I'm going to show you how I make my salsa. Over the years I've been developing this garden salsa recipe. There's uh, gar Salsa is a beautiful uh, food because it is extremely flexible. If you put too much tomato or too much peppers or too much onion, it's not necessarily too much. It might just be something that you prefer. So whatever I show you today is just sort of the evolution of my garden salsa. You can use it as a guideline for how to make your own. Today for this garden salsa recipe we'll be using red tomatoes, different colored tomatoes from the garden, mostly red here. And also, just because I don't think I'll have enough red tomatoes, we'll fill in uh, with some yellow tomatoes. We also will be using some jalapeno peppers, onions, garlic, salt, cumin, chili powder, and lime juice. Now I have a few tomatoes here in the bag that have already been prepared in the kitchen. We decided to shoot outside in the garden just because it's more fun and the light is really good. Inside the log cabin house, the light is really dim. So we're gonna just start by putting some tomatoes here in the Vitamix. And it's okay if they're not all chopped up. It'll get mixed up real nice. We're gonna aim for, a lot of times when I do recipes, I use ratios more than exact amounts. So we're gonna go with two quarts of tomatoes. That's our goal for today. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the ratios on the onions and the peppers and garlic uh, later on. All right, Adeline, you can start preparing the other red tomatoes. Just cut the tops off, quarter them, and then we'll get them mixed in here in the Vitamix. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on low speed, really low, because I don't wanna make puree. I just wanna kinda of chop them all up. After I put the lid on, just for safety. Oops, wrong one. I'm doing it backwards. Make it the slowest possible speed. add a little bit of color variety in there and it is okay to use some green tomatoes because they have a really interesting flavor as well it's just going to add some uh, flavor depth profile I don't know a little bit of body whatever the professional words are for adding and mixing different ingredients we're going to throw some green tomatoes in I'll cut my fingers off Juicy. Turn that off for just a second while we get the rest of these cut up. We might have enough red ones. I thought we wouldn't, so I got some yellow just to be prepared. You can check out another video of mine just a few days ago of us harvesting the red tomatoes and the yellow, uh, the yellow pear tomatoes. The yellow pear tomatoes are really nice. That's what this salsa is made out of right here. It's, uh, they're a very small, sweet tomato. So mixed with a little bit of mango, this is a really nice, sweet salsa. Let's get the rest of these in here. We're gonna need the yellows. We do need some yellows. Obviously, we don't have two quarts, so we're gonna fill this up the rest of the way with yellow tomatoes. Go ahead and drop those in. Yep, those were already cleaned up in the kitchen. The yellow tomatoes were stemmed and washed in the kitchen. The red tomatoes were rinsed off, but uh, we needed to go ahead and cut the tops off of those. Are we technically making a fruit smoothie? We're making a 
fruit smoothie. Technically. Wow, that took a lot more of those tomatoes than I expected. And it's still somewhat chunky, which is good. That's what I want. It might take all of them. Wow. You want to leave them there? I don't want the leaves. Thank you. That's it. We're going to use them all. I knew exactly how many tomatoes I needed. See that? Exactly. Yeah, you can toss that one. Throw it over the fence to the chicken. All right, so we're gonna mix these, get all those yellow pears down in there, get them chopped up a little bit. If you're making salsa that you don't need to preserve for a long time, you can just make a small batch and put it in the fridge. You don't have to cook it or anything. You just mix all the ingredients and use it. Let them blend together in the refrigerator. The reason we'll be cooking the salsa today is because I'm gonna take it into the house and can it to be preserved for future use. Now, canning is something here on the farm. Canning is something that I don't want to show in the video because canning is a science. You need to find a trusted resource, uh, a canning book or videos that are dedicated to showing you exactly how to be safe. Um, I feel confident that I'm safe while canning but just in case I make little mistakes, I don't want to pass that on to you guys. We'll pour our tomatoes in first because that's going to be the base. Those yellow pear tomatoes, they'll break down as it cooks. Normally I prefer to get them a little more cut up, but that's okay. That's perfect. Great, now we'll cover this just to make sure we don't get any butterflies or bees in there. Now we'll move on to the onions and peppers and garlic. We're gonna aim for a third of this container or so somewhere in there with onions. In a batch like this, I typically will use two jalapenos. You can use any type of hot pepper you like, make it as hot as you like, or even leave them out if you're allergic to peppers or if you just don't like the hot pepper flavor. Don't cry, it's okay. We're gonna cut up some onions. And the reason I have an assistant is because I don't wanna cry on camera. And she's prettier than I am. All right, get those cut up. We're just gonna take the outside off and quarter them and drop them in here. While she's taking care of those onions, I'll get some of these cloves pulled apart on the gar garlic. Yay! You guys ever uh, in high school or other grade school or whatever, somebody in the, in the lunchroom drops a tray and everyone cheers and laughs and claps? Yeah. I was the one dropping the trays. I'm going to throw in five cloves of garlic for this batch. And I'll show you how I do my garlic. Cut the little ends off because those hold on. Give it a squash. Pull the paper off. The good thing about doing this outside is I can just throw all this into the garden. Beautiful. This idea right here, just cutting the ends off and smashing it, that works out really well for me. The ducks are always laughing at me. I went and got a bowl of water just to give these onions a little rinse. And into the blender they go. Now onto the hot peppers. These are jalapenos. Because I didn't grow peppers this year, I didn't grow any hot peppers, I'm limited to what the grocery store has. And they have two bins. They have jalapeno and habanero. And the habanero peppers were empty, they were gone. So jalapeno it is. The jalapeno peppers, the way we're gonna use those is that we're just gonna cut them right down the middle. We're gonna scrape the seeds 
and pith, that's the white part. We're gonna scrape those out and just use the pepper itself, the flesh. Whenever you're handling hot peppers with your raw hands, you do have to be careful not to rub your eyes or any other sensitive parts of your body because it might burn a little bit. It doesn't last forever, you will get over it, but you could wear gloves or wash your hands with an olive oil or a, a, some type of oil when you're done and that'll help take that the oils, the hot oils off of your hands. And if there's a little bit of seed and pith left, that's okay because that's just gonna add a little bit of heat to the salsa. And we're gonna do this on low speed as well, variable low, because we want it chopped up, but we don't want it to turn into a puree. You don't have to use a blender. This is just a tool that I have. If you have a food processor, that's fine. Or some people prefer to actually just do this on the cutting board all by hand, and that's fine too. Notice how that cut it up, but it didn't turn it into a slurry or a puree. Great, this is looking beautiful. We are ready to move on to adding. Notice that this ended up being between a third and a half of the peppers and the onions and the garlic. That's what I was looking for for this ratio. Again, it's flexible. You can put more or less of any of these ingredients. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So we'll add in our peppers and onions. Okay, now that those are in, we'll just stir all those in. Part of the cooking is to blend the flavors and it's also to reduce uh, reduce it down just a little bit to take some of that tomato liquid out. That's looking really, really nice. Now another ingredient that's very popular and we like here is cilantro. Uh, one person in our family chooses uh, not to eat cilantro. She doesn't really like the flavor of it. Some people have an aversion to cilantro because it tastes like soap. You either like it or you don't in most cases. Uh, I like cilantro in the salsa, but she doesn't. So this batch is gonna be made without cilantro. So we'll move on to the spices. One tablespoon pre-measured in this little bowl here of chili powder. This is normal off the shelf canned, uh, you know, it comes in the little bottles of chili powder. So we'll add that. One tablespoon of cumin. Put that right in there. And one heaping teaspoon of uh, salt, I prefer to use Himalayan pink salt. I like the flavor and it's real pretty pink. We'll put that right in on top there. And we'll get all three of these spices stirred in real nice here. That is looking and smelling absolutely fantastic. All those things just kind of hanging out in there. It's not a slurry. If you prefer it less chunky, you could make it a little more blended. Uh, if you prefer it even less, uh, more chunky than this, you could skip the blender altogether and just do everything on the cutting board. That's gonna take 20 to 30 minutes to cook down and reduce to a point to where I like it. And so we'll come back in a few minutes and show you how to finish up. Now that your 20 to 30 minutes is up, we can remove the salsa from the heat and give it a good stir. It's still a little bit runny, but that's okay. You can reduce it further. Cook it without a lid, that would help reduce it. I had the lid on because we're outside. But that looks pretty good. Our final ingredient, I saved this for the end, it's lime juice. And in a batch this size, we're gonna use about half a cup. And I'll just pour it in when it's done cooking and give it a good stir. That's for flavor and acidity. That looks really nice. That looks like good salsa. So we're gonna taste 
You can get your tasting spoon. We're gonna taste with a spoon first. I'm gonna taste with a spoon first. And then we'll try it on a chip. Mmm. Mmm, flavor's really nice. Wow, that is fantastic. Wow, that is a good batch of salsa right there. Try it on a chip and do it over here over the garden just in case. Every batch of salsa that I ever make, I say this is my best batch. This is my best batch, except for cilantro. I think it could use a little cilantro. <laughs> I don't. Here you go. Thank you very much for being here with me. It is truly a pleasure to be uh, sharing my story with you. Here on the Daddy Curbs Farm, we believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you for being a part of my story today and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 20 to 30 minutes, whatever it takes. That looks pretty good. Ouch, that's hot. We're gonna, ouch, that's hot. Thank you for being a part. <clears throat> My last bite got me. <clears throat> he needs some milk. <clears throat>